Was it four? Okay. Yeah. All right. I'd like to call to order the City of Sagatuck City Council workshop for June 7th of 2023. Uh, would the clerk please call the roll? Baldwin? Here. Lewis? Here. Munsey? Here. Gardner? Here. Neal? Here. Stanton? Here. Dean? Here. Uh, do we have any agenda changes for this afternoon's session? Mm -mm. Hearing none. Move to item five. Public comment on agenda items only. Uh, if anyone has a comment on an agenda item, uh, please approach the podium, state your name and address. Uh, we have no one in the audience. Is there anyone on the Zoom uh, call that would like to address the council for public comment? I see none. Oh, that that will just unmuted. Oh. oh, yes, I just want to say I'm here. Uh, I have two items on the agenda. If you'd like to, I'm here just here to answer questions. Um, if you have any questions. Thank you, Logan. Yeah, we 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 may have questions for you on uh, six F and G. So thank you for that. Thank you. Um, yeah, great. Uh, that takes us to um, six our discussion items. Uh, first item is a resolution uh, two three zero six one two A M dot Cat B application. It's on page two behind your agenda. Um, Ryan, do you want to take that one or is that? Well, Mr. Mayor, we we had the pleasure of having uh, Mr. John Moxie on the call. Great. Go ahead, John. Yeah, good afternoon, everybody. Um, I think most of you remember, we have applied for this uh, MDOT funding uh, a few times in the past. Uh, this is one of the only opportunities for communities like Saugatuck to get funding for local roads. Uh, you get some Act 51 monies, uh, which is about enough to plow the snow and, and fill the cracks. This is really one of the rare opportunities to, to do something more. Um, it comes out every year to two years. This, this funding round is for applications in 2024 and 2025 construction. Uh, we settled on Maple Street uh, for this application. And this could go one of several ways. Um, Maple Street is included in our application to Eagle uh, for the water main replacement. Uh, so if that gets funded, uh, and we move forward with the Maple Street portion of that project, uh, this would be used to basically just as a second funding source for that. Uh, if we don't get that funding, this would be used for a standalone project. Um, both, both cases, it would, it would be looking at 2025 construction. Um, conversations with the township on cost sharing will continue um, between now and then, uh, since it's a border road. This application uh, would only cover uh, road work, uh, but that's gonna be needed either way uh, because obviously the road is in real rough shape. It was not hard to find uh, photos of bad pavement out there. And honestly, the photos probably don't do it justice. Um, so this uh, resolution in front of you, uh, the language is all from the MDOT's template. Uh, it's just the uh, formal step that the council takes to uh, approve the application. Happy to take any questions uh, you folks might have. Any questions for John? No. This looks good, John. So I think um, I think we'll all be in a position to move on this on on Monday. Uh, great. Thanks, John. Yeah. Thank you, John. Yep. Thank you. Yep. Uh, next is a six B ordinance two three zero six one two dash. Oh, same same ordinance number as the resolution. Is that correct? Uh, correct. Okay. Okay. Very good. Uh, temporary waterfront moratorium. Is this? Uh, oh, there you are, Ryan. Go ahead. All right. Well, good afternoon, uh, Mayor and City Council members. Um, as you know, back uh, in March, you uh, adopted a police powers ordinance that established a uh, temporary waterfront commercial development construction moratorium in your um, Water Street North, Water Street South, Water Street Commercial and Resort uh, zoning districts. Um, that was published in your uh, paper on April sixth. Um, and became effective on that date. Um, now that the city council has passed a, uh, the police powers ordinance, uh, based on uh, uh, recent court decisions, I believe it's a, it was a, a federal case on the Eastern District of Michigan, um, staff and legal counsel are kind of recommending a, uh, what our, our attorneys have called kind of a belt and suspenders approach um, to review and consider a corresponding zoning ordinance amendment, kind of layering this. Um, so the proposed corresponding zoning ordinance amendment uh, is attached for your review. Uh, because it's a, a zoning ordinance uh, amendment, the Planning Commission was required to hold a public hearing. Uh, they did that uh, on May 18th. Uh, they received 
uh, no public comments and they unanimously recommended that the city council um, adopt the amendment. Uh, as you know, Mr. Patterson, your city attorney is here and the planning commission certainly had some questions and trying to understand why the layered approach and, and kind of what the uh, the judge and the uh, the federal judge thought and Mr. Patterson could best answer kind of those questions on why it's best to, to do both, if you'd like. Great, thank you, Ryan. Any yep. questions for Ryan? Got off easy this time. Okay. All right. Thanks. All right. Great. This takes us to a 6C revocable license for pumpernickels, page 37. <laughs> <laughs> Clerk is always so thoughtful and helping uh -huh. all the sound sessions. Uh -huh. so. He wants you to get your cardio in. So just up and down, up and down. All right. we'll do, do mountain climbers later. So okay. So these agreements are uh, a reoccurring theme. Um, um, some businesses, uh, so uh, Pumper Nichols uh, requesting a revocable license agreement for uh, the sidewalk seating that's on the uh, the public portion of the sidewalk. Some of their their sidewalk seating is actually on private property as well, and um, we've had some discussions uh, related to the, the zoning approvals that we'll need um, in the fall um, related to all of it, but. Um, uh, at this point, want to make sure that uh, the sidewalk seating is is taken care of on the uh, as, as far as the revocable license agreement goes with the the city portion. Any questions for Ryan? Just you know, we keep talking about what is going to change in the fall. Mm -hmm. What will change in the fall as far as sidewalk seating? So I don't know that it necessarily is going to be like a like a dramatic change. I know um, Mr. Patterson indicated that it would be good for us to kind of make sure that um, kind of our zoning and then whatever we're requiring as far as licenses, either in revocable license agreements or separate permits for expanded outdoor dining into the street, that those things are all uh, in alignment. Um, you know, the, the zoning ordinance indicates that any expanded outdoor uh, dining, um, whether it's in the public right of way or on private property, requires um, zoning approval. Um, so there's that that layer, and then there's also the layer of using city property and the permissions that the city needs to 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 grant to actually use that that space and whether or not there's any charges for the use of that space. And so we want to make sure all of that's in alignment. So we want to make sure everybody has their zoning approvals. Um, and that will carry with the land. Um, so that won't be something that's reoccurring. And then taking a look at uh, what kind of um, permits or licenses do we want to make sure in place for the um, public right of way portions um, and then whatever fees that you may choose to have on that right now you charge for your um, street dining but you don't charge for sidewalk space you know maybe that's something that you want to, to take a look at so i think at some point we'll get together make sure they're all in alignment and then we'll bring something back to you if there's going to be you know any proposed changes and yep i think one of the things that ryan and i had talked about this is kind of interesting in a lot of the communities that we work with during the pandemic, uh, as soon as you had an emergency declaration, you were basically allowed to then through like an administrative process handle most of this. And so there were several years where we will be able to do it under emergency declarations because it suspended your local code. Mm -hmm. As soon as we went through and made some amendments to tweak that and make that work, that was like very convenient for everybody that was downtown. But of course, we don't have an emergency declaration, local codes not suspended. And so now when you come back and sort of look at the activity that's been allowed to happen, and you kind of want to continue to promote that, it sort of is going back into the regulations and providing what is sort of more, I think, customer focused and letting the applicants have an easier process. So they can come through, get the zoning approval, that zoning approval then will coincide with another section in the city code to allow to come in front of council and sort of make it, it'll, it'll make a little bit more streamlined, a little bit more straightforward for everybody as well. Nice, so. sounds good. So Ryan, Ryan C. Mm -hmm. So these have been trickling forward to us and like in Pumpernickels, they'd already been set up. Grow had really been already been set up. So mm -hmm. is this a matter of just walking right. around and noticing that they have these things set up already and they just haven't gotten approval for it or? Right. So they set them up. I'm like, hey, <laughs> noticing this and then reaching yeah. out and then taking a look at now the case like Pumper Nichols, they actually came last year and, and got a revocable license agreement, but it, the agreement expired in November. Yeah. So they should have applied for a, an agreement for this year. They didn't. They were on the list, uh, you know, but we're following up and, and making sure that they have received the, the the proper agreements. So, so, you know, kind of going to Lauren's question then in a proactive approach in the fall, mm -hmm. is it a matter of just giving those folks a head up, a heads up, you know, in the new year, hey, your your license needs to be renewed. Please get your stuff in so that we're not kind of catching up. Yeah, and absolutely. like with the activities and stuff that we've been doing, people have gotten much better about that. Mm -hmm. but, mm -hmm. 
Oh, absolutely. And I, I think, you know, we, yeah, I think there's multiple layers to it. You know, you, you'll recall that you actually approved kind of some, some prosecutorial discretion for this summer for us to kind of continue with right. the approach that we have now, at least yeah. related to the zoning side. And so, um, yeah. you know, we've, we've sent an email to all the, the businesses that at least previously had expanded outdoor dining, um, letting them know about kind of how the process would work this summer, as far as what would be required in the fall. I also followed up with an actual letter, um, okay. you know, to each business. And then um, as these have been coming through, I've also been having these discussions with uh, the businesses. And that, for example, scooters, that's next on your agenda. The Cala building does have some zoning approval, although the seating has changed over time. And so, and it's kind of expanded. And so that's something that they'll have to have some updated zoning approvals for as well. But, um, but, you know, and we intend on having an actual open house type event where we'll set a date and time and invite all of the businesses so we can try to walk them through this process because it's it's tricky and there's a lot of layers to it. And we ideally want to, like I said, like Chris said, you know, streamline this to where it's yeah. not cumbersome for them and not cumbersome for staff as mm -hmm. well. So, yeah, got it. Right. Um, uh, uh, do you have a, how do you communicate with all business owners? I had two business owners this week mm -hmm. come up to me and uh, weren't aware that they had to have a license to be uh, in the city. We also have new businesses that come as well, like the new James Boutique mm -hmm. and other stores like that. How are you reaching out to folks that might not even know that we even need a business license? Because we just renewed that just a few years ago. Um, uh, the license, uh, uh, licensing and, um, so I've had a couple situations recently where we were working on some enforcement related items and discovered right. that they're not registered. That was so one of the candles, the, the registration. So that she's probably best to answer how that process uh -huh. works. Uh, Jean from back to the fuchsia. She, she does, she needs to get one. I, I was like, here, I work as a council and I didn't know she didn't know. Um, and then, uh, brass anchor as well. She didn't know that she needed a license as well. Did, do they are, are they on your list or okay? Um, it's masked out to everyone in the database. Right. This is the second summer back. Right. So that's what I was asking. How is that database being updated or it data when okay. somebody applies? Um I, I sent it out to everyone in the database from last year. Right. My next step is to walk around town and see who has not checked. Awesome. Out That's what I was going to suggest. That I'm checking off. Then it's going to be a walk around. I'm mm -hmm. not there yet. Um, and you know, and you know, a lot of our business owners, even if you email them 10 million times, they're still not, they're still saying, oh, well, I never got it. Or maybe they don't even know it's there. Great turnout this year. Okay, good. Oh, great turnout for business license, a lot more than last year. Okay. But there's still new people that weren't on my list that I need to catch up with these newer right. businesses coming into town. So mm -hmm. that's just going to be a face to face approach just to, yeah. how I mean, this is mm -hmm. what you, know, you need to do. But it's been, it's been a good process. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, yeah. thank you. But if you ever have anyone, please shoot me an email. I'll call them. So yeah, there's a few new ones. It's up to you. I'm like, I didn't know. Just shoot me an email because that'll help me out. Mm -hmm. And I'll just turn around and reach right out to them. That will do. Thanks. Yeah. Just, I've got one on this particular one. Um, it looks like their their application says 15 tables, no more than 40 chairs. And what's described to us in terms of a motion is, uh, at least it's described as seven tables and 24 chairs. Right. And so that was something the applicant returned with and indicated that she had inadvertently put some of the tables and chairs that they had on their private property, oh, okay. not what was just on public property, which so your agreement is specific to the so it's 724. And, and right. Is that any substantial difference from what they've done in past years? No. Okay. Same. Right. Same. Okay. okay. Great. So I have a quick question. Yeah, go ahead. Um, yeah. So piggybacking on that, it, it would be super helpful to know if the applicant is requesting the same setup as they did last okay. year. And I don't know how we could do that if that's just including last year's diagram or maybe making a, a box to tick that says, you know, are you making any changes from last year or, or just something? Because I know when I review this in the packet, it's I'm scrambling to remember, okay, what, what did that look like? Is there okay. any substantial, mm -hmm. substantive change to this year? So yeah, that's just, easy to to, to ask talk to the applicants about some yeah. way some way to sort of clarify yep. changes year to year. Yeah, that way you're for yep. a quick review. Makes yeah. total sense. Certainly can Thank do you. that. Yep. And just you know, and I'll I'll know it too because you know, if some more enforcement activities happening as, as summer picks up, you know, our, our, the approach and, and 
goal of staff, I think, is to work towards voluntary compliance. We're not just mm -hmm. seeing something on the sidewalk and going writing a citation and saying you didn't apply, you should have. I mean, we are trying to, to gain some voluntary compliance. Um, there's certain circumstances where that's more difficult than others, but um, we are trying to, to work with businesses and, and residents when we discover issues. So, and I, I want to point out too, I did make some notes on Scooter's map. It's a, their layout's a little different than what it shows on the map. So just so that they have a, we've got a, the right map to vote on on Monday. Certainly we can follow up on that. So uh, yeah, we still have technicals? Okay, yeah. Yeah, thank okay, you. Yeah. Um, just more of a general comment to build off what uh, Council Member Lewis said. I think it's important. It's an administrative burden from my opinion to have to keep coming back. And we've come back, what, two, three times now at council meetings to look at revocable license agreements. Right. And I think it should be incumbent on the applicants to say kind of what has been said, look, have these in by, X date, adding council member Leo's comment about, I think it's just like a, you know, it's like whatever you do an insurance mm -hmm. application, right? Is anything changing from last year, whatever your home, same thing, right? Is this the same as last year's approved license? And two is have this in by this date because in that way, collectively, the staff can look at these all together, present them to council for discussion because when it's piecemeal, it's kind of difficult. I can't get my mind around just, you know what I'm saying? And so I think yeah. it, administratively, I think it'd be far easier for city staff to manage this. I, with I a, don't disagree one bit. Yeah. <laughs> so. Yeah. So. yeah. You should have a deadline on when you can apply for that. Yeah. Right. Anything else on this one? Uh, but do we need to go into this? I mean, we got scooters here on page 49. No. That's a D. Anything on mm -hmm. that for Ryan? Same story, basically. Mm -hmm. Very nice picture. Yes. Okay, great. Anything Anything going once, going twice on scooters? Okay. Nope. Uh, that takes us to E then, special event, movie in the park. Um, that one. Yeah. Ryan, are you going to take that one? Um, it's on page 61 of your packet. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Speaks we for don't time. have any representative. Uh, I don't see mm -hmm. Melanie on the line. Well, I help out at that event every year. Okay. Um, uh, 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 it's that's the same thing that we've done for I think four or five years. Um, pardon. <laughs> six. Six. Thank you. Already. And uh, and um, it'll be the big movie screen. She's going with the same company. We haven't picked out the movie. The folks um, uh, will have like uh, usually vote for the movie. She'll put out three or four. Um, and uh, they'll vote on social media what movie we'd like to watch. And it's always a fun event. It's the same as done as always. So, Mr. Mayor, <clears throat> one question had come up about making sure that the movie, um, that there was copyright authority for the movie. And I think this was addressed in previous years. So the movies that are still there always is. Yeah, we always go through a company and pay for that copyright. So, very good. One thing I noticed on the copyright rules is that unless you have specific information, unless you specifically apply to get the likeness, you can't post that on banners and that, like I saw last year with Greece, there was a picture of Olivia Newton-John or whatever, that you have to have express permission for that or otherwise that's a no-no. Oh, okay. Well, I'll- And I think that we should make sure that we communicate that both both the people, because the city is um, on the hook then if we get, uh, and, and some companies do vigorously pursue uh, on their own. Yeah. Um, well, I'll look into the company and see, you know, what they, what they say about that. So, yeah. So you can feed that back to Melanie. That'd be great. Yeah, definitely. Awesome. Yeah. Thanks for that. I'll but, definitely bring that up that you said that. Yeah. I want to ask you with the application. I think they've completely underestimated the attendees. 125. Yeah. Honestly, <laughs> no. I think. That's, yeah. No, actually, to be honest with you, the popularity of the event. And I think that's that's. And I have an issue with it. The more the merrier. So. If you've gone to it, you'll know it's not that very big attendant. It is about 100 and 150 that usually show up. So you would think more, but no, actually, it does. So. Yeah. Not a criticism, more of a boy, it's a fun event. So, yeah, looking forward to knowing what the film is. Yeah, pardon, looking forward to knowing what the film is. Oh, yeah, it is a fun event. Okay, we would like to see more people come too. Yeah. Yeah. Um, great. All right, so on the, on the cinematic theme, that takes us to uh, F, <laughs> uh, special event, Sagatuck Film Festival. We have Logan on the line. Um, Anybody need to tee this up or do we still want? No, let's just go straight to Logan. Logan, you've got the floor. Hello. Thanks. Uh, thanks for the time. Um, yeah, I'm just here to answer any questions about this. This is going to be our uh, second year doing the Film Fest. We had a successful first year last year. And uh, yeah, we want to do it again. The only, um, I think last year I appeared before you guys to kind of let you know this was going on. Um, this year I am actually making a request 
unlike last year, uh, I think one of the target areas that we have to make this year's fest even better is to increase our out of home advertising. So we're trying to take advantage as a nonprofit. Um, we're trying to take advantage of some kind of free and low cost advertising means and we're attracted to possibly some yard signs that I've seen for other events around the area. And then the big, the big kind of one would be the um, sign under the Saga Tuck sign for the two weeks prior to the event. I think we're very interested in having something like that uh, to kind of get sell some tickets and whatnot as the event gets closer. Right. Any questions for Logan? No. Mm -mm. Super one, excited. One uh, note, I don't have our liquor license or event insurance for this year yet. I attached to the application um, our information from last year, just as a call out to show that we do, we do do the right paperwork, um, but we just don't have it right now. Okay, great, thanks. Anything else for Logan? Um, I hope I can go this year. I tried to make it last year. Yeah, it'd be great to have you. <laughs> Thank you for doing this, Logan. Yeah, it's, it's such, really cool. It's such a gift to the community. Yeah, thanks. Yes, thanks. Um, thanks for the kind words. Just, just for practicality standpoint, will we be able to action this on Monday, or if that those two pieces are still pending? Yeah, you can. You can, we'll word the motion to okay. uh, make sure that we have that documentation. Okay. Uh, staff will okay. make sure to collect that. Okay, great. Uh, another special event: Spear Street Block Party, six G. It's on seventy one. This too is Mr. White, I believe. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yes, it is. Yeah. Anything, anything new, Logan, on this one? Uh, we are scaling it up a tiny bit um, uh, in celebration of our, it's the 11th one. I think it's the third one in a row, uh, but we're getting a five piece band. So I wanted to make you guys aware of that. Um, they actually discovered them at uh, Retro Boats. So thank you, Lauren, for showing, showing us that. It's the local commuters. They're really great. Um, but I just wanted to um, if there's any uh, adjustments that need to be made to the start or end times or anything, I don't know how any of that goes, um, but we're flexible on that. Logan, what band? It's the local commuters. Oh, uh, they're the best. They're so good. Yeah. <laughs> they're so really good. Fun. Yeah. Have you had them before? Oh, gosh, yeah. 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 And variations, like either the whole band or like one or just two members. Fun. They all do it separately. So that's cool. Very good, Logan. Nice. Yeah. Thank you. Excellent. All right. Um, that takes care of that. We are on 6H, uh, special event, 4th of July parade. Um, way to go, Birdie. Yeah, way to go, Birdie. Mm -hmm. Ryan, are you going to be Birdie for us? Um, I can act like a Birdie. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Jamie, have enough energy. Um, yeah. We're going to be having our safety meeting tomorrow. Excellent. So there'll be more information on the cover letter on Monday when you take action. Um, but I just wanted to make in the fact that it's kind of safety meeting in between workshop and good right item of item of note is a, a change in the parade route yeah which has been submitted and this is this is uh i think we i think the previous year we had changed it because of the high school construction yeah. uh -huh. they do want to do like the the loading area up by the high school yep. so we're going to go the fire department has this information i know DPW and the fire department, and I think the Allegan County Sheriff's Department has reviewed this. They've already talked about barricades, so we'll discuss that in depth tomorrow uh, at the at the meeting, uh, as well as the uh, 4th of July extravaganza, which is in the evening. We'll also be discussing that at the same meeting. And this is on the actual 4th? Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I'm hoping that they stick with this parade route. What they did last year um, was challenging for businesses yeah. on Water Street who have yeah. uh, who are open for business during that time. Um, so if we can stick with this, this would be really helpful. Yes, <clears throat> yeah. Uh, the other thing I would mention is that uh, typically the parades over the years have gone from south to north of Butler. So. I don't know if it was last year or what, there's one year people were confused about which way the parade was going. So I just think if we can make an effort to make sure people understand it's coming from north to south on Butler, because people were, I don't know, it, it, it raised a few questions, which was kind of odd, but I think it's just out of experience. People expect it to go this way towards that way, right? So just to make sure people. Okay. Are they just yeah. lo looking in the wrong direction? Well, no, they were saying, hey, Gardner, 
<laughs> race car, which way is it going? I mean, those are kind of the questions you get. So just more of an FYI. Sure. I, yeah, I think once we get this locked in, we'll, okay. we'll promote it. But yeah, give people it, enough notice. Yeah, we'll soon. Say, That's all. Okay. We'll put some arrows. Yeah, no, it, it, it sounds like a ridiculous comment. <laughs> but it's the kind of things I hear from people on the street. Yeah, it's, it's really a thing. Gardner, which way is this thing going? I was like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, good. Excellent. Thank you. Uh, while we're on the subject, I I'm, was overseas last year for the fourth. Uh, what, um, what's your expectation for um, participation from the council? Um, what, what are your thoughts on that, how we should show up as a council? Yeah. So um, for the last couple of years, um, we have had a presence in the parade, the okay. Department of Public Works. We get vehicles ready and uh, we have th two or three vehicles. And so we always invite council people to join us and either jump on the truck or walk by the truck and just kind of be a united unit. And so we'll do the same this year, as far as I know. Is, is your is staff's preference to have us together in a, in a dump truck or have us in our own vehicles, have us walking? What would you guys like? Just, just, just open to suggestions. Yeah. I, like I said, a united unit. So okay. if you could all get in the, in our, in the vehicles, that get would in be. The truck. Well, get, get in the dump truck, truck together. Yes. Right. In the truck. I do. think you should be in a convertible with a top hat as the mayor. <laughs> we need we need a hat like Douglas right. has or something really? like that. Yeah. yeah. Isn't that Jerry, yeah. isn't that Jerry Donovan's? Shirt? Yes. What? You're right. Okay. Yeah. I don't Maybe know you want to come in a tuxedo. Or how about a sash? Not, a sash Scott, and a Scott, you, you and I. A are, sash and sash. I'm on wardrobe. Like you and I. Yes. We're on them. All right, we'll talk. We'll talk far through. All right, after. I would like. You still have your chain as the Brits I was do. Oh yeah. oh yeah. I don't think I. I don't think I don't think I'm going to recreate the shovel over there. Oh. <laughs> I, I, I barely I barely stayed mayor after the shovel brigade um, funny I, th I think maybe seersucker I, I maybe Ooh, or white I've, that, always, I've always wanted to have a white suit I like seersucker I think a white suit maybe a white hat Oh, steer sucker? Can I pull up? Steer sucker. Yeah. Can I pull up? That's very old timey. Okay. Can, you I, can I pull up? Can I pull up? Back. Oh, we're gonna circle back. Holly's gonna be my stylist. Yeah, we're, we're on. Oh, okay. All right. We've got a team. And she and she may style the rest of you too. So just be prepared. <laughs> <laughs> you know, once she starts, she uh, may not stop. Huh? Okay. Good. Yeah. So thanks. Yeah. Thanks for. You're welcome. And as a side note, for some reason, my my dad is real. My dad is really excited about pressure washing the vehicles before the parade. Oh, so okay. he's like been talking to me about oh, that for the last Take two the weeks. I'm like, off, <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so he's he's gonna become a part of Scott Herbert's team. I, yeah, okay. He's fine. 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 I'm sure Scott. Be <laughs> Have him sign a waiver. <laughs> okay, good. Good. And now, if there's nothing else on how we have to dress up on the fourth, um, I six I special event fourth of July fireworks update. Now. Yeah, fireworks yeah. and lasers and music extravaganza. Um, so I, I did hand out the first um, version of the uh, this this image is just for social media, so you you all have that uh, item of note. Coughlin Park is spelled incorrectly, so we will get that corrected. Um, and thanks to Mallory Heiss, my sister, who uh, worked on this image, we're going to have a couple more images coming out. One's just going to be a, another poster, and then one's going to be for sponsors in particular. So we'll actually have three versions, but this is the social media launch. We'll probably go out tomorrow once we get a few things corrected on this. Yeah, that's cool. Uh, that's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. So, hey, awesome. yeah. Excellent. And, and if you haven't looked up, um, please do Google DJ House Shoes. Um, and you'll realize kind of what talent this this gentleman has. Um, yeah. So just an item of note. Huh. Good news is uh, all the vendors have been locked in. So right. we got our fireworks vendor. Nice. Uh, we got our laser vendor locked in. Uh, we got the barges locked in. We got the permits going with the fireworks. Yep. Um, DJ House Shoes is locked in. Stage and lighting and music, that's all locked in. Um, and then, yeah, we're working on the posters. Uh, so that's all that's all well and good okay. um, yeah. and exciting. Uh, also, what comes along with that is some housing needs. So laser guys need housing. Um, DJ House Shoes needs uh, lodging. Uh, Mr. Eric Jackson, who's coming out of Detroit, needs lodging. Uh, but we did receive an in-kind donation uh, from Mr. Sean Steele oh, for lodging good. for Mr. DJ House Shoes and Mr. Eric Jackson. Oh, uh, oh very nice. Yeah, right. At, yeah. At, uh, 
the saga talk right on the river so that's pretty yeah that's very nice. kind of shot awesome. yeah. very very kind so thank him if you when you see him um and then as far as expenses go I, we reviewed this at our last meeting uh nothing much has changes has changed there uh on the revenue side i just want to you know give you a rundown on that um city of saga so, city of saga tuck we're in for 10 okay uh we did make an ask ask for from douglas for douglas at 4k they came back and they decided on 1k uh which is hey you know thank you we it's, we, it's we appreciate it. we we appreciate it huh. um the township ask that's an interesting one that was also at 4k that's what they uh committed last year um the township manager <laughs> did canvas his board uh they said that they weren't interested in putting it on their agenda uh they're most likely a no um but they do have my email in correspondence so there is a potential of them pulling that email and putting it on the agenda and making a decision um, to contribute. That's where they're at. Yeah, and on the back of that, I did follow up with Daniel and and uh, the board chair, just you know, reminding them because Ryan's note was prior to Douglas kicking in something. So I just asked them to reconsider. Um, but it does, it does raise the bigger issue. I mean, we're going to have to um, have a hard discussion after this season's over about you know, putting on these events that benefit the tri-community area with, without us, you know, getting support, you know, I mean, this can't all, we can't sustain this being, in my view, in my view, this, we cannot sustain this on the backs of the, of the taxpayers. I mean, we have other levers we could pull. Um, you know, there are things like non-resident beach passes that we could, we could address again. And then there's other levers we could pull. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, we're going to, I think we're going to need to start to communicate to the tri-community area and to the business associations that, you know, you know, th th this takes a lot of staff time yeah. mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and it's, it's uh, frankly, I mean, it, in all honesty, you know, the, the economic dynamics have changed with people renting all around the township and tourists coming in and, and visiting the township, visiting Fenville, and then also being able to say, hey, I can go to a great parade and a great party in Saugatuck that night, uh, you know, drive in, drive out, and, you know, basically, you know, do that on the backs of our taxpayers. So, uh, you know, I think we're going to have to start to communicate that, you know, we can't continue this way. And, you know, it, you know, it'd be great if there was some sort of tri-community business association that could have the bandwidth to do this, you know, along the lines of what Rotary's doing for Venetian. Um, but yeah, it's not fair to you and staff to have to keep trying to mm -hmm. do this past the hat stuff, you yeah. know, and, and organize it, frankly. So yeah, I think we're going to need to communicate that and, and continue to have a discussion as a, as a council. Go ahead, Russ. Uh, yeah. Thank you, Mayor. So, what I want to try to understand is what, and, and there's really not, this is an opposition to this. I can't see anybody from the village of Douglas city council or the township board saying we oppose this. Why is it they don't think it's important to put a financial contribution in? And you know, what, what, what's the, is it, I don't know that I mean, to me, that would be the question to ask, right? Okay. Right. What, what is change your mind and not invest sure. $4,000 this year or invest anything yeah. at all. That's kind of where I go with this. Okay, what's changed? What, what, how do you not see this benefit? It's, it's a good question, Mr. Mayor. Go oh, please. Can I address yeah, it? yeah, absolutely. Yeah, so I asked the same question, right? So you did, like, so I'll back up a little bit. As disappointing as the, the initial response is um, from the township, our regional partnership is really strong right now. So I'm not going to let like this yeah. one event sour right. that in, in any way. But I did ask that same question um, because events and tourism, that's our bread and butter. Um, and the township, they have a lot of businesses, right? right. Um, and so why they feel like they don't want to feel the need to contribute and what changed, uh, the answer that I received, it no longer aligns with their priorities. And they're willing to partner with us on other things. And you know, the manager gave me a list of things that they're willing to partner on. But for whatever reason, this 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 event does not align with the priorities. So I take it at face value, and you know that's a decision for their board members to make. And I I, I just said, that, well, that's disappointing, and I don't get it, but um, that's okay. Um, again, I'm not going to let that sour our, our relationship, which seems very very positive. So yeah, no longer aligns with the priorities yeah, is the answer you. I got. Hopefully, Maple Road is a priority for them. Well, so there's other, you know, so there's other things, right? So that's why. That's why we got to be cool. Yeah. Um, okay. So anyways, all right. 
So that's the township. Uh, the CVB, they just delivered a check just before the meeting for 10,000. That's pretty awesome. Thank you, thank you, thank uh, you. Ooh. Yes, that's great. And then I did reach out to Sadaba. I kind of knew what the answer was gonna be. It's like, we, the answer is we barely have enough money, if enough money to put on music in the park. So mm -hmm. they're, they're, they're cash strapped. Um, so there's other entities that I've been in discussions with, and I'm trying to um, go after regional or national companies before I start tapping into our local businesses, because I know they get tapped quite often. So had a meeting with Humana, nice. right? Um, so the ask for, for them was 10,000. Um, I saw the gentleman's face get very red, <laughs> I'm ask for it. but we'll, we'll see what, what, what they come back with. And they, you know, the, the question in return is like, well, okay, what, what can you do for us? And it's like, we can, we can allow you to set up a booth um, and I can introduce you to some people in the area, but you know, you got to do your own marketing in the area. So, you know, with the sponsorship for these groups that are not local, you know, that we will allow them to, to set up some booths. Uh, at and another group, uh, Rocket Mortgage, um, you know, from the east side, very strong presence over there, Meyer. Um, another group, and so, and then there's a, a list of 10, 10 more uh, organizations. Um, plus, Mike Johnson has um, given me some prelim preliminary commitments of what they have done in the past. So, um, I feel pretty confident that we'll be able to get the money. So, good. Awesome. Yeah. Good well job. Well done. Great. Yeah, it's a lot of work, a lot of logistics. Well, that's yeah. that's what we're trying to get you out of the right. business. That's mm -hmm. not fair for mm -hmm. you. You got bigger fish to fry. Um, mm -hmm. uh, anything else from the council on this one? Mm -mm. Thank you. If not, that yeah, covers our you. discussion items. Um, so that takes us to seven uh, public comments. Uh, this is open public comment, three minutes. Uh, Dave, I know you're here. So uh, if, if you want to approach and just state your name and address for, for Jamie's benefit, please. Good afternoon. I'm David Swan, 345 Griffith. I'm actually wearing two hats this afternoon. First hat is uh, property owner at 345 Griffith. I addressed all of you, is it two weeks ago or four weeks ago? Now I'm losing track of time. Um, my bad, I have not followed up with the Ryans yet, but I do have um, some photos um, too large to send as an email. So I'd like to just pass it out if that's sure, true. Sure, absolutely. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, the photo on the back, you can see um, three, there were actually four cars parked on the tree roots um, over Memorial Day weekend. I would, I would love to have no parking signs in place for July 4th so that we can really protect these trees as well as just provide a little bit more uh, pedestrian safety from that, um, um, from that blind parking spot. Um, so I'll follow up with the Ryans. Um, so I'm putting on my Saga Duck Dunes Coastal Alliance hat. Um, Thank you again for uh, that 65 point resolution that was unanimously passed back in October. Thank you, Ryan. Thank you, Chris, for your uh, good work on that. That was really um, um, a great and helpful document. So that was for the Army Corps of Engineer permit review. Don't forget there. So there are three um, permits that are required, local, state, federal. The state permit was granted in um, uh, 2018 that expired in January of this year. So the applicant is is reapplying. That application is administratively complete, and Eagle will be sending out a request for public comment. No doubt, the city of Saugatuck will be uh, properly noticed, as you all manage and own uh, Saugatuck Harbor Natural Area and Talmage Woods. Um, um, I would like to. Um, encourage all of you to consider doing another resolution talking about the public interest factors um, and i'll follow up with ryan 
and and hopefully Chris um, to put together another resolution talking about the the impacts and in this case specific to state laws um, which would be um, 301 inland lakes and streams um, 353 uh, critical dunes those are the two regulatory lenses through which um, Eagle will be making a determination so I'll follow up with um, with all of you later Thanks. Thanks. What's the deadline for the public comment period for that? Great question. Um, so they've not yet put out the notice. Um, it's typically 30 days. Um, as soon as I hear, I'll let you all know. Okay. Um, and there will be a public hearing as well, and it will be on Zoom. Okay. Thanks. Great. Thanks. Thanks, David. Thanks. Okay. okay. Uh, that concludes public. Well, let me. Is there anyone in the Zoom that uh, would like to offer public comment? I don't think so. No hands raised. Jamie, you see anything? No. So I think uh, we don't have any other folks that want to offer public comment. So we will close that item. And now I will entertain an item eight to go into closed session. The language that we need is here. This will cover both items for discussion. Um, I'd like to make a motion um, to go into closed session pursuant to MCL 15.26. 8E and H to discuss confidential written legal opinion regarding the ongoing lawsuit with Dune Ridge SALP. Second. Uh, motion Stanton, second Lewis. Uh, is, this, is this a roll call or a voice, Jamie? Roll call. Okay. Go ahead, please call the roll. <laughs> Baldwin? Yes. Lewis? Yes. Muncie? Yes. Gardner? Yes. Leo? Yes. Stanton? Yes. Dean? Yes. All right. We are now in closed session. All right, City Council is back in uh, open session for our workshop on June 7th. Uh, that takes us to uh, item nine, correspondence, boards and commissions vacancy notice. Um, I think it's fairly self-explanatory. Mm -hmm. um, well, the people whose positions are up, are they planning on running again? Like, are they planning on trying to? I, what is the process? Do they, do they? Do... Okay. Okay. You did receive applications. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Mr. Mayor, I would, I would just comment on the ZBA and the Planning Commission. I've served with uh, Steve and Ann. Yeah. I would fully support them continuing, assuming Ann applies to continue. They've been wonderful and uh, a good representative of the city and a great planning commissioners. And Jim's, or Steve's done a great job at chairing. Jim Bauck, I've gotten to know too through the ZBA and uh, under um, uh, Bob Kabaziak. And, and I would certainly support Jim's continuance on the ZBA. Okay, great. Thanks for that. Um, and do you think we need to prompt Ann that her term is expiring and suggest she, go ahead, Ryan. Yeah. Well, your, your clerk's on top of it and sent me the notification. So we did send it to the members that have terms expiring and ask them to, to get their applications in by a certain date so we could have this uh, reappointment if you were to choose to reappoint the mayor yeah. uh, on your next uh, meeting agenda. Well, I, I agree with Russ. I'd like to see Ann reapply yeah. I, hope, I hope she would so. yeah yep. so okay yep. what is it ryan what is the date did you give them uh, it says here oh, july 1st yeah. yeah and i don't remember which date i gave them but i know it was yeah. with enough time to have it on your next workshop agenda i'll lobby um, and so i see her quite a bit okay I'll great uh, appreciate it appreciate it um good uh that's correspondence uh we're item 10 council comments uh, i'll start sorry i'll start with uh garn this time sorry i'm good okay russ yeah, just uh, real quickly on parking, which seems to be a popular topic with the letter from David Swan. Um, and uh, at the last council meeting, I had asked the city manager to begin looking at, I think we need to come up with a strategy for some of the on-street parking and some of the issues that David Swan brought up. Um, I'm also aware that the uh, fire chief and the deputy uh, went around on Memorial Day and actually took videos of some of the problem areas on the streets, particularly, I think Ryan has seen this maybe. Pleasant Street, Main Street, um, and then we've got some discussions here. So I, I would really like to see the city begin to get a little bit more strategic about this because there are some definite safety issues. Interesting sitting down working in the parking lot at Culver Street for the school. Um, so two things. One that's of interest is there's a spot within the lot itself that there's cones put out. So I don't know if that was, uh, I don't need to really discuss that too much here, but someone's blocking a spot off within the city lot, which doesn't appear to be uh, legal. Two is that sitting and watching those the spots that used to be reserved across the street for um, for the duck 
Mm. Um, there's still white, there's still yellow lines, people are parking there. So I think as part of the street painting, uh, we should be thinking about, do we still continue to have that off limits or for a future use, business use, or are we just gonna remove that and make those spots? People are using them. So just some observations from sitting at the lot for a few hours, so. Great, thanks. Uh, mm -hmm. Mark. Uh, sorry. Nothing at this time. Gregory? Nothing at this time, otherwise, other, other than I've noticed those cones being used for a couple of years now mm -hmm. that you're talking about at the city lot. Mm -hmm. yeah. Nothing at this time, thank you. Nothing. Um, I have nothing but a elementary school graduation at 6 oh, p.m. Goodbye, Douglas Elementary. Oh, we are gosh. done with Douglas Elementary. <laughs> uh, we, need some, we need some new students at Douglas Elementary in the near yeah, future. In the near future. Get in. All right. Uh, uh, with that, I will entertain a motion. To... I'd like to make a motion to adjourn. Second. Motion Stanton, second. Lewis, all in favor, please say yes. 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 So I'm the last one on the ground.